as you know, the world we live, uh, there are many different kinds of people, different animals, different culture, different uh, beliefs. But basically that we are all human beings, we are all beings. And everyone is, wants to be free from suffering and everyone wishes to achieve happiness. So for the sake of happiness that we do everything, good things, bad things, many things. And for the sake of happiness that every individual, every society, every country is making efforts to overcome the suffering and to achieve the happiness. And for the sake of uh, this goal, that we made uh, developments, especially during the last century, we made tremendous progress is made in the field of science and technology. And these, of course, have brought many good things, many positive results, such as like, uh, many of the diseases that could not be cured. Nowadays, they can cure very easily. Many of the places that we can't travel before, now you can travel very easily. And communications, transportations, and many things so helpful, so many wonderful things have achieved. But then at the same time, just these outer material developments alone could not achieve the real, real peace and happiness that one is seeking. Moreover, that through these developments, unless and until we made some inner progress, inner spiritual progress, these outer material progress, whether it is a, a positive or negative also, it is difficult to say. Although in many ways it's very positive, but also they can be used, if it is used in the wrong way, then of course many disasters, disastrous things can happen. And so therefore, uh, we need to find the real inner peace and happiness. Just physical happiness, physical comfort is not enough. No matter how good, how luxury place you, you have, how luxury life that you lead, unless we, our inner mind is not happy, then it has no use. So therefore, that one have to find from the inner a real peace, the peace that can last, happiness that can last forever. So therefore, how can we achieve this? That we can only achieve by making our own inner mental progress. And the mental progress, how we can make, and that is only through the spiritual uh, advice and spiritual uh, practice. The world we live, there are many different religions. And I personally believe that the, every major religion of the world, the, each one of them has its own beauties, its own way to help the mankind. The Buddha himself uh, admit this, that the variety of spiritual, spirituality is necessary because Buddha himself also did not teach one kind of teaching. Buddha taught many different, uh, different levels of spiritual path because that one kind is not enough. For example, like there's another me one medicine that can cure all the disease. You need each different di disease, you need the different medicines. Not only different medicines, 
different methods of the different traditions, different med medical tra medicinal traditions is necessary. For example, like for certain disease, the allopathic medicine is very effective, whereas certain medicine, certain disease, the Ayurvedic medicine is more effective. For certain disease, the homeopathic medicine is more effective. So likewise, the spiritual also, spirituality also, I think the variety, of di because we are all different, we people have different tastes, different ideas, and different uh, mentalities and so forth. So therefore, uh, of course, there is, is necessary, different spiritual uh, path is necessary. But I myself, as, as a Buddhist, from the Buddhist point of view, how to make our life more happy, more, more peaceful, is that uh, the problems, the sufferings, that many, we have different kinds of sufferings, physical suffering and the mental sufferings. The physical sufferings, as there are many different methods. Now, for example, when you have disease, you can take medicines. When you have now, uh, now other things, the like material health and so on. But the mental, for the mental, it's not just by being taking medicines or giving other treatment or having good facility will not help. The only way to help is to, to change our way of thinking, our way of uh, our own mind, the way, of, the way we think and the way we face. And so, so such way of thinking can help us very much. And so therefore, for this, I think the Buddhist teachings can help. Not, His Holiness Dalai Lama always uh, advises us. There are different categories. Buddhist religion and Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist science. Buddhist religion is only for the Buddhist people, people who have initiated, who have taken the vow, who have, uh, who have taken the vows and so on. But the Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist science, anybody to, to do that, to listen to that, to learn that, you don't need to have to be, become a Buddhist. Anybody without becoming Buddhist, you can learn the Buddha's teachings and you can learn the Buddhist philosophy and it will help. It will help to understand the life, the meaning of the life and how to face the difficulties uh, of our life. And uh, so, uh, so therefore, uh, the Buddha, the first thing, the, the, after attending the enlightenment, the very first thing, the very first teaching that the Buddha gave is the Four Noble Truths. And the Four Noble Truths is very important because the the very first truth is the truth of suffering. Uh, of course, we don't want suffering. We, we are doing, we are practicing, we are uh, making efforts to overcome suffering. And, but to overcome suffering, you need to know what is the nature of suffering. For example, like when you are sick, the very first thing is you have to find out what is the sickness. So therefore, we go through the test. Uh, we do many different kinds of tests to find the exact nature of, the, of your sickness. If you can find exact nature of your sickness, then you can get the treatment. So similarly, that you, we need to know the nature of the suffering. So therefore, the Buddha taught the, the truth of suffering and why we face as suffering, why we face sufferings in our lives. 
physical sufferings, mental sufferings. And then we, after knowing, after when you know the exact nature of the, uh, the illness, then you have to find out what is the cause of this suffering. Either it is a food or the way of life or any other causes. So similarly, the second truth is the truth of cause. What causes the, the suffering? And so the cause of suffering is the, the wrong, wrong views, the wrong way of life, the wrong contacts that causes all the sufferings. Normally when we face this, the problems, we always tend to point the finger to the others and blame to somebody else. Due to that, due to this person that I suffer, due to this thing that I suffer. But actually, it is not from the outside. Yeah, actually, it is, comes from our own minds, our own negative emotions, such as love, the desire, anger, jealousy, the pride, etc. And so therefore the Buddha told the, the second truth, the truth of a cause. And now when you find, when you find out the exact nature of your uh, sickness and also the cause of sickness, then you wish to, to, be, to, to cure from the sickness. That is our goal when we are sick. We wish to cure from the sickness. So for that, he, the Buddha taught the third truth, which is the truth of cessation. And the truth of cessation means where the, all the uh, sufferings are totally cease. To cease the, uh, the suffering temporarily is not enough. You need to cease the the sufferings as, uh, for, forever. So the truth of cessation is where all the forms of sufferings are totally uh, cease. Now to reach that goal, for example, to reach our common goal, well, for example, when we are sick, our goal is to cure from the disease. Now to cure from the disease, you need to take the medicine. You may need to take the treatment. And similarly, when you uh, to cure, to to reach the the cessation, the truth of cessation, where you cease all the forms of the the suffering, that you need to enter the path. So therefore, these are the four noble truths which are. The basically, the Buddha taught the truth of suffering and the truth of cause and the truth of cessation and the truth of path. So the one is the cause, one is the, the result. One is, one is the truth of cause, causes the sufferings. The tru truth of path achieves the truth of cessation. And so therefore, in our everyday life, that we face many difficulties. And so when you do not have any kind of a, a spiritual assistance, then the, the problems become very severe and unbearable, even the physical pains. But when you, when you think in another way, different ways, then it, even though you, do, you are not completely uh, cured, but the way of thinking can change and it brings much lesser degrees of the suffering. And so the one of the things is that Buddha said that all compound things are 
impermanent, which means, uh, which means that anything or compound means things that the uh, the life that we encounter in everyday life that we encounter many different feelings, many different uh, uh, kind of situation. All of this is not just happened accidentally. All of this is not happened without cause. All of this is not happened uh, from the wrong cause. Each and every thing has its own cause and its own conditions. For example, like to grow a rice in the field, you need the rice seed. From the rice seed, the wheat will not grow because wheat and rice are two different things. So to grow the rice, you need the rice seed and the fertile ground that is suitable to grow the rice. And also you need the, the temperatures, and moistures that are necessary to grow the rice. So when the cause and conditions, all of this comes together, then the rice will grow. Similarly, the wheat, and similarly all the other things also. Similarly, the, all the life that we have also is not just accidentally happening, it is all all the feelings that we have, all the experiences that we encounter in everyday life. It is not just happening, but all has its own cause and its own conditions. And so he said, all of this, all of this, for example, like the families that we have, the present family, the where one is born, we have not chosen this. We have not chosen to be born, born this uh, particular family. We are born from the Buddhist point of view. We are everything. All of this is caused. What we call the karma, which means actually the cause and the effect, and it's due to our own cause and craving that we today we are born in this particular family. So likewise, that each and everything is like each and everything is with the cause and the conditions that appears, the life appears. And so he said that everything that is with the, depending on the cause and the condition is impermanent because it needs to depend on the cause and conditions. If any of the cause and condition is missing, then it will not appear. A very good example is like televisions. On the television screen, pictures to appear, you need many things. You need electricity, you need the machine, you need the wires, you need the antenna. When all these conditions are together, then the picture will appear. If any of the things is missing, even the tiny wire is missing, the big picture will not appear. Oh, now, this is the cause and condition. When the cause and conditions all together, then the things appear. So anything that is uh, missing, it will not appear. So that means that anything that is with the cause and condition, depend on the cause and condition, is impermanent. Uh, on the, on the television screen, the picture is appearing. If the, suddenly the light goes off, the power goes off, the picture will not appear. Suddenly the wire is, is broken, the picture will not appear. So this is impermanent. Everything is changing because it needs to, as long as it needs to, to uh, depend on the cause and the condition, it is a uh, uh, impermanent. So the impermanent, and all the co all the compound things are with the four endings. It is said that with the four endings. What are the four endings? Four endings means end of gathering is 
separation. We gather, we gather, many people gather together, like today. Today we have gathered here many people from many different parts. But the end of this is separation, that we all go different. At the end, we don't stay here for all the time, but we end of this meeting that everyone goes into to, to their own places. So the end of gathering is separation. We all separate, we all go to separately. Even in our life also, as I said, that the family, we, when we meet, mean the family members, we think that it's kind of always together. Family members are all together. But we have not chosen to be born in this particular family, but due to, to our own deeds, our own karmas that we are born in, in this particular family. And then we live together. We are gathering, we are gathered. We have the father, mother, brothers, sisters, wives and children, husband and children, wife and children, and so on. So we all gather, but we don't, there's not a family that remains forever. One day, the, the one passes away, another day, another pass, father passes away, another mother passes away, then one self passes away, the, uh, the spouse passes away, the children pass away, and, and then it all, 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 all is gone, so it's impermanent. So the end of gathering is a separation. There's a not gathered and then never separate. It's always the end of gathering and separation. And then the end of uh, <coughs> uh, accumulation is exhaustion. No matter how much you gather, how much wealth or how much uh, possessions or how much power that you gather, there's another one that gathers together all the time. After a while, it all loses and it all exhausts. For example, uh, in the histories, there are great empires that owned almost the whole world, but they did not remain. Today, they don't remain. They all separate. After all, they lose and becomes small, it, it, it all finishes. So the end of accumulation is exhaustion. And then the, um, uh, end of height is to fall down, no matter how high you reach. Uh, for example, like ancient times, they are said to be like universal emperors that who rules the, the many continents. They are rulers, the emperors that who rules many con continents. But they don't remain all the time ruling. Again, they fall down. Similarly, no matter how high positions that you own, that you get, it does not remain there forever. After a while, something happens, and then you again fall down. So the end of height is to fall down. And then the end of, uh, end of birth is the death. Anyone who is born in this world have to end with the death. There's nobody who is born but who did not die. There's not a, even the slightest doubt about it. that anyone, there are many great historian uh, figures, many great spiritual practitioners, and many, many great, uh, uh, many great statesmen, many great heroes, but today they are just history. They do not remain. So the end of the birth is, is death. So all compound things, all compound things are, are like this. So therefore, the impermanent, the Buddha teaches the impermanent. And the impermanent has 
So we, the one of the wrong things that, that we think that life is permanent. So that when the life is permanent, if the life is permanent, then, then it's necessary that we need the, the wealth, we need the power, we need the things so that you can, you can rule everyone. But if the life is impermanent, what is the use of having so much wealth? What is the use of having so much power? Because sooner or later you are going to lose. So when you lose, you face even more suffering, not a suffering. When you get, you are happy, but when you lose, also you get the suffering. So better not have a strong attachment. So one of the, the, the causes, main causes of the suffering is attachment. Because when we, when we have a strong attachment, when you have a very strong attachment, then you get anger because you think other, other people who have, who have the power, who have the prosperity, who have the wealth, that you, you get angry. And those who have the others, you get jealousy. And so when you have the anger, jealousy, and uh, attachment, one could never experience the peace. So the, the sufferings, the mental sufferings, the anxieties that we encounter in our everyday life, it is not caused from the outside. It is caused actually from our own negative emotions. The negative emotions then cause, if you don't have the anger, if you don't show anger, when you have the anger, you know, the, the minute the anger arises within one's own mind, you could not experience the peace. And our faces become black, dark color. Anger is actually associated with the dark color. And anger is then, uh, uh, the, disturbs your own peace, and also it disturbs your, within your own family members, within your neighborhood, in a, in a larger sense, the, in a whole area, in the whole world. The whole world, the, the problems that we face in today's world comes from our own anger. So we, when, we, when we realize this, and the anger is the cause of all the suffering, it is difficult to, to us to control the anger straight away. But if we know the anger is the cause of all the sufferings, then at least we can, we can, real, we can feel and we can do something to, to calm down. The minute you calm down your anger, your face is changed, and you can experience peace. You can experience peace within your own family, within your neighborhood, within the whole area. So the many of the problems that we face, the, all, the, on, all the problems that we face, uh, actually, we should not blame for outwardly, but we should try to see inwardly from where it comes. The person who do not have the anger, do not, cannot have the enemies. But the person who has the anger, of course, naturally have enemies. But enemies is like, just like the, the projection, is like the reflection of outside enemies, actually the reflection of one's own anger. When you, when you look at the mirror, your own uh, image will appear in the mirror. Similarly, when you have the anger, due to your own inner anger, then it reflects and appear, the enemy will appear at the outside. And now, if you try to, to destroy your 
enemy with your anger, then the other side will also get angry. And then, uh, then in this way, it will increase. It, it will even you destroy one enemy. There will be another, 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 another more, more enemies will arise. So instead of destroying the outside enemy, but if we sort of look into our own anger as an enemy, our own enemy, enemy that causes all the sufferings, is not at outside, but in within our own mind. So if we try to see that, then at least even you could not destroy it totally. It's difficult to destroy it totally because we've been associated with the, the anger for such a long period of time. And we have formed like habitual tendencies that builds up. We know very well, for example, like the bad, bad behaviors such as like drinking and smoking, etc., are harmful. Everyone knows smoking is very harmful. But the person who, who is used to it, who have formed the, the bad habit, even though the, every packet has written that it's the injury is to smoke, even it, though very clearly written, but the persons who are, who are already in the habit of smoking, they could not give up. In spite of seeing these signs, they still have to smoke. So likewise, that we also, we knew the anger is harmful, uh, even in this life also. I mean, when you have the anger, then you could not only, that you could not uh, experience peace and happiness, but also you lose your appetite, loses your sleep, it loses your, uh, the whole atmosphere. So it is harmful. And when your mind is disturbed, uh, many of the disease, many of the disease that, physical disease that we uh, suffer comes from being unhappy. When your mind is very unhappy, when you are in uh, great tension, when you are in great anxiety, that causes of the many of the many of the diseases, such as like the blood pressure, and all of this cause from, from the mental tensions. Uh, many, many doctors told me this. this uh, so, so therefore, so it is very harmful. So the, something that is harmful, then we should not do it. So at least we should try to, to think about this, and it will help. So instead of showing the anger at the outside, if you saw the, the problems, the difficulties, circumstances that we face in our everyday life, uh, not comes from the outside. It comes mainly from our own negative emotions, such as like the anger. And why we have the anger? Anger and attachment are like one coin of the different size different place. Because when you have attachment, strong attachment, then you get the anger. And so these, uh, so the basically all of this, so the, from the Buddhist point of view, there are three main negative emotions. And all of these negative emotions comes from basically the ignorance not knowing the reality. Instead of seeing the truth that we uh, being ignorance, being an ignorance and that we do not, uh, the, so the, from the ignorance arises the, the anger and mm, desire or the attachment. And when you have these three, the anger, desire, and uh, ignorance, then from there arise the pride and jealousy, etc. Many, many other negative emotions. And when you have the negative emotions, 
then we take actions, physical actions, mental actions, verbal actions, and then due to these actions, then then it could create the whole whole life, and then the 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 result is result is that we all suffer. We physically, mentally, that we suffer all all the time, constantly. So therefore, instead of blaming for the others, we have to look into our own uh, negative emotions. So the enemy is not at the outside. Enemy is within our own mind. Our own negative emotions are the cause of uh, difficulties, the problems that we face. And so the Buddha said that everything is impermanent. When you think, and in this perception of impermanent is very important. Because when uh, we usually think that everything, life is permanent, we always tend to, we always plan that life is permanent forever, that we, we are going to live forever here. And we, are, we must have all the things, we must have possessions, we must have this, we must have that, we must have this, we must have power. We, and because of the attachment and then when you lose, you get angry. And so the, the main problem is this attachment. But if you think of the impermanent, everything is one day that we are going to lose. Whether you have a, even a kingdom also, you are going to lose this. So then why we have the strong attachment? Why we hold so much? Why we hold so tightly? Because sooner or later that we are going to lose. So this helps very much to relieve our tension and our uh, anxiety. And then also, and this impermanent, there are two different kinds of impermanent. One is the, what we call the gradual, uh, the gross, gross gradual uh, impermanent. That is that everything is changing. For example, our physical body is changing from the baby, becomes children, child, teenagers, then teenagers become young, adult, and then you become middle-aged, and then you become old. And as you grow old, your body also changes. Colors of your hair changes, the skins of your body changes, your face changes, everything is changing. And this we see, the, the things that which we see is called the gross, uh, continual, impermanent. Outwardly also the, the places are changing. Summertime we have a different color. Then we have autumn time, another color. The beautiful colors you have in, in the fall, you have beautiful colors. And then winter time we have another, another kind of color. Then again, the spring and so on that is changing. So everything is changing. And so the changes that we see is, is a gross, gross impermanent. And this change, it is not that we don't change in the overnight. For example, our color of our hair. Yesterday is black, and today suddenly didn't change the white. But it changes. The changes occur actually all the time. So therefore, it is called the, the momentary, um, the subtle momentary changing. That means actually the change is constantly, the, every single moment, the, the shortest possible time that is, is change, change is occurring. And when you see the color is change, your color is change, your skin color is change, your hair color is change, then it's already a uh, big change is already occurred. So the, to change to such color is constantly changing. And so, so the everything the, is changing, everything is impermanent, everything is impermanent. So impermanent, to say the teaching of the impermanent is uh, actually a uh, very 
great uh, help to think because when you have a, when you think of the impermanent that you are going to lose, your color is going to change, your body is going to change, you are also not for here forever, everything is going to change, then naturally that you, it reduces the degree of your attachment. And when you, your attachment becomes lesser, then naturally also it becomes uh, the anger also becomes lesser. There's no point in fi fighting. There's no point in quarreling because sooner or later that we are going to lose. Sooner or later that we are going to change. Sooner or later that we are going to, to, to die. And so therefore, what is the point? So while we are here, while we are living, while we are today as a living being, that we must leave everyone happily, everyone peacefully, everyone. To do that, you have to feel the other people's feeling also. Uh, when you think about yourself alone, when I think of one's own well-being, one's own happiness, one's own suffering, one's own things, then one could never achieve the real peace. As yourself wish to be free from suffering and longing for the happiness, every sentient being, every living being, every human being also is the same feeling, just as like yourself wish that every other being also has the same feeling. And so therefore, so instead of thinking yourself alone, we have to think of the others. Uh, as we, uh, as always, we feel that as yourself, with your own, with your own body as an example, your own body, you wish to be, be healthy, happy. All other beings are also have the same feeling. So therefore, you have to think of the others also. Others also. So you think when you when we think of actually self and others, actually. Others is more important because self means just one person. When you think of others, means a countless beings. So the countless and one, countless being means much more, more important. So we have to think of the others, their well beings, their happiness, their uh, sufferings. And so, so in this way, like the impermanent and uh, mm. the sufferings that we, if we think carefully, then it helps to, to lessen, to lessen our own difficulties, our own problems, our own sufferings. And then gradually the ultimate aim is actually to to achieve the everlasting peace and everlasting happiness. And so to do that, I always advise, of course, everyone wants the best of everything. I mean, even in the, even in the spiritual path, everyone wishes to follow the highest path and most advanced path, deepest path, most profound path, of course, we need. We want the best food. We want the, the best place. And we want the best life. But actually, to, to practice the highest path, are we really ready? If we are not really, really ready, even though you, you are given the highest path, but if we, one is not ready, then it is not, I mean, to ride on the best the most powerful horse, you need some strength. If you don't have the strength and if you are giving up the best horse, the most powerful horse, then it's going to be a problem. So therefore, I always advise, first of all, irrespective of whether you, you are Buddhist or non-Buddhist or, or whatever, whatever religion we follow, 
whatever philosophy we follow, the first thing that one must do is we have to be a good human being. The good human being from being a good, without becoming a good human being, how can you become a good spiritual practitioner? First, you have to become a good human being. And what is the good human being? Uh, you know, in the ancient times, they have the different races, like uh, the priest race, the royal race, and uh, then the, the general race, and then the lower race, and so on. But the Buddha is the, actually the first one, he said, the revolutionary who made everyone equal. Buddha said there is no such thing as in your own bone, in your own thing, that high race and lower race. He said everyone is equal. The highest, who is the highest race? The one who is truthful and honest and leads the virtuous life is the highest race. It's not the family that is you are born, but whoever does that is the, the highest race. And so therefore, so therefore, it is very important to, uh, to feel to, to this state, because Buddha said that everyone is equal. Everyone is equal. Every, because according to the Buddhist teachings, everyone has the Buddha nature. In a sense that if one follows, if one meets with the right method, if you meet with the right path, anyone can become a Buddha. Everyone has the opportunity. Not only the human beings, even the animals. Every living being has the Buddha nature. So that every living being can become a Buddha. So that is, of course, very, uh, our very uh, main goal, because everyone has the Buddha nature, everyone has the hope that if we, if we make efforts, that we can become Buddha. So that is our, our goal. So to, be, to become, to reach that level, first you have to be a good human being. And the good human being means that one who not only on the, on the selfish thoughts, if one is very selfish, if one is very selfish, then one cannot experience peace, one cannot experience happiness, and one could, could not be the good human being. Good human being means one who is truthful, honest, and also cares for the others. Just as like yourself wishes to achieve happiness, every living being also has the same goal. So instead of thinking one's own well-being, that we think of the others also. And so with such things, such thinkings uh, help us to face the everyday uh, difficulties. And uh, so now to enter the spiritual path, it is very important for all of us to make first a good human being. And on the basis of good, becoming a good human being, then one can follow the spiritual path, whichever, whichever path that one thinks suitable for, for you, then one can become, one can follow that path and with that part, then one can uh, achieve whatever the, the one's goal is. So, uh, so therefore, that I would like to now uh, conclude this talk. Uh, and so that, that, that as a basis, next uh, few days I will be performing here. Uh, very high initiations, so to especially those who are participants, that they should make a good thought. Instead of blaming for the others, that we must think of uh, one, instead of thinking oneself alone, one's own well-being, we have to think about others. We have to think about every, 
all others. And with that, then one can achieve the peace and happiness. And so I wish all of you a complete success in your everyday life as well as in your uh, spiritual path. Thank you very much.